I'm in Sam Broadcaster today, and I'm talking about setting up your station to have a playlist that sounds fresh all the time, and your rotation rules, including clock wheel, categories, the, uh, the actual rotation rules within the configuration, naming, and that type of thing. So I cover in some detail the naming um, conventions that I would suggest you use, or the importance of naming in this video here. But it has to be the one thing I stress again in this video too. Before you begin, anything to do with setting up your playlist, it just accept the fact that it will not work properly until you've actually decided on a naming convention. Your tracks have to be named consistently throughout. You can use any method you like as long as it's consistent because Sam Broadcaster is stupid. It's just a database behind the scenes. So all it's going to think is that if you're using an uppercase here and a lowercase here, it's a different artist or it's a different track and it'll play the same one two times in a, you know, the same song twice in a row. You never want that on a radio station. So that's the very first thing. Put the time in and get those tracks named and re-tagged. Cannot stress it enough. Secondly, decide what your station's going to focus on because by default you've got one category here which is tracks it contains everything it contains everything that's uh, that's that well actually it can potentially contains everything but you want to split that down into categories so here you can see i've added a top 40 category i've added an imaging category which maybe contains some key tracks that sound like your station uh, if you might have a particular sound that you're going for a particular genre that you're going for so maybe you're a rock station and you might want to just put all your rock tracks in here uh, you might have a particular sort of, I don't know, maybe you, li you like every so often to play an 80s song. You know, so you can put an 80s section in here. Or you might want to please a particular group of listeners and you might have a separate category just for those. And they're used in the clock wheel rotation that we'll come to just a little bit later on. So I would suggest setting up between about 5 and 10 of these categories, depending on how many songs you have. An extremely important part now is the playlist rotation rules themselves change these from the defaults they're set to 60 120 240 and 240 which is crazy most people now have a collection of music that's above 10,000 songs I mean you might restrict it on a station to only be a thousand songs but either way your clock wheel rotation and your rules are not going to get starved I use the word starved and what I mean is Sam tries to apply rules and can't, so it just simply cannot put a track in. You know, with these kind of values, you can, you know, play, do not play the same album within 60 minutes. Well, that's just mad because the same album is often likely to have the same artist and you don't want to play the same artist within an hour. I would personally extend that to sort of something like 12 hours and these equally to 12 hours or more. If you've got 10, 14,000, 15,000 songs in your playlist, make them 24 hours to 48 hours. Keep things really, really fresh and don't worry too much um, about, uh, you know, about these being quite high. That, the defaults here are way too low. So there, the, that's sort of tip number three, I suppose, would be to change those. Now let's move into the clock wheel rotation. There are actually three methods of doing your playlist and your, um, your, your playlist rotation rules within Sam, but I'm going to look at clock wheel now. Don't be sort of put off by the clock wheel. It looks a bit, a little bit off-putting because it immediately looks like some kind of script. And that's all it is. It's just a basic script telling it to do things. It's got nothing to do with time. It's got nothing to do with a clock. It's just a sequence of commands that Sam will work down one after another and go back to the start when it's done. That's all it does. In this case, we're saying take it take a track from category tracks, put it at the bottom of the queue and apply lemming logic to it, which means it's going to take all the potential logics it can have and just choose one at random. Not really a good one to use. In most cases, people generally suggest using just random in that case. But if you want to see what all the rest of them are, if you go to a new line on your script, you can add in comments, you can add in other bits of code in here as well. But let's stick to the simple stuff. We go to our category, I'll bring this box on the screen here, and you can see now that we can choose to add a track from our, cat. you know, the categories we suggested, uh, we added earlier. So if I choose my top 40 category, and I want to say, because I probably won't have too many in my top 40 category, maybe only 
40, you know, but probably more than that. I'm going to say the least recently played song. So every time it reaches this line of code, it will pick the least recently played songs and, and it will ultimately, among the big mix of things, play your entire top 40 every time it hits, you know, it'll have to hit the line 40 times in the code, but once it's done that, it will have played every single song in the top 40. That's a really nice way to work because, you know, you, you've got your current music constantly coming back there and, and sort of reaching your listeners and sort of keeping the sound of the station modern, keeping it fresh and keeping it sort of really up to date. So, and that's sort of the great flexibility with these. So you just add in category top 40, cue it at the bottom, least recently played, that's what LRP stands for there, so it's least recently played songs, and enforce the rules, which is the play, the rules that we set up just a second ago, or uh, around how often you can play a certain artist, how often you can play a certain songs, a certain song. So if it tries to apply this rule and it can't because of those, it'll just move on to the next line of code. It's e easy as that, really. So you just build this up and maybe put about, maybe put about 15, 20 lines in here to sort of just mix up your music a little bit. So let's just add another one here. It keeps moving off onto a different part of the screen. Uh, so now I'm just gonna go back to my full list of tracks. I'm just gonna say, yep, yeah, fine. Um, and, no, in fact, I'm gonna now do something that after a top 40, I'm gonna move back to something that brings my station image into my station brand into focus. So I'm gonna just do a random one from that. And that's the next line, of, next line of code once we get to the bottom here. And if you want to remind yourself of the reasons, just add a comment in, click on comment and just put, uh, let's have a look. Bring station brand back in and then we've got a line of code here, which can go as a comment above that line. So you can just remember the reasons you put each of those bits of code in. And again, that's really all there is to it on Clockwheel. It's really, really basic, but incredibly powerful because once you've expanded this out, together with your playlist rules, you've got a station that to a listener sounds very varied, sounds very sensibly varied and very nice to listen to but behind the scenes is actually not random at all. It has rules applied, it has very strict logic applied, categories applied. You're controlling that then with the clock wheel and you can get a station sounding just how you want it. Very, very simple to set up, really important to do your naming conventions, set your playlist rotation rules, set up your categories and set up your clock wheel. I hope this is useful for you. I've tried to cover a lot there in a very short time. I've kept it under 10 minutes, so hopefully that's useful. If you've got any questions or comments on this, uh, anything that, you, that I haven't really covered, it is fairly brief, please do put them below. And if you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you soon. Bye.